Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use something called a message box in Tkinter. So message boxes are a new type of widget that we're going to discuss today. Message boxes are what you probably already know as pop-ups. So sometimes when you're browsing a website, using an app, or using a Tkinter desktop app, you might actually press on something or perform a certain behavior or activity. This will actually launch a pop-up. Now this pop-up can be in many different forms. For example, it could be an error pop-up like this one that you see right here, informing you that somehow some error occurred either from your end or the application's end. Another type is a warning message similar to the one you see right here, warning you of something that you did or may do. Another is an info message just giving you some direct information and asking you to acknowledge it using the OK button. There are also other types of message boxes in Tkinter. For example, there are ones related to questions. Now, there's a total of eight different types of message boxes in Tkinter. Three of these are these guys in which you only have one option to choose from, which is the OK that you see the button that you see right here, or these guys. Now, I said there are eight in total, but one of them is missing. You'll see it in the video, no worries. But anyways, these guys, you have actually two different options that you can perform, or here you have actually three options. And here, depending on what the user selects, you can perform different things in your application. All right, so without further ado, let's actually get started. Let me move over to VS Code. So you can see right here that we have a very straightforward Tkinter application. It's an empty window, only we have one button. Now this button, if you press on it, this will show the pop-ups that we were just talking about. So this is the info message. If I press OK, then it would exit. Do note that I can't actually reuse the application until I acknowledge the info message or I press on the X. So let's say I press OK. Now I can get the second one, which is an error message. I can get the warning message the questions that I was talking about. And yeah, these are different options that we're going to code today in this tutorial. OK, all right. So now I'm going to close this and show you some of the starter code that we have. So how does this starter code look like? Firstly, you have to import Tkinter as always. I'm just going to ignore this import for now and get back to it in a moment. OK, I'm also going to ignore this function right here. Next, what you do is you actually create a window. Now, if you are any bit familiar with Tkinter, you probably know this process already. But here's what we're actually doing. We're creating the root widget of our application. So this will be the root which contains all the other widgets in our app. Then what I did is I created a button using tkinter.button. I assigned it to this root widget and then I assigned the text to be press me. So here I'm asking the user to press this button. Then I assigned the command to be this open message box which is this function right here. As of now, this function has not been implemented. I have a pass keyword right here saying that, OK, this function hasn't been implemented. Don't do anything essentially when you execute it. But the main logic that you need to take away for now is that this button has this callback function as its command. So when the button is pressed, this open message box function will get executed. This is the main logic that you have to know for now. OK. And inside of this function right here, this is where we'll code asking the user to create these message boxes. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to button.pack. So in Tkinter, you probably know this by now, but anytime you want to add a widget to your screen, you have to first define it. So I create my button equal tkinter.button. And next, you have to actually position it in the screen using one of the three geometry managers, pack, place, or grid. Here, we're using pack for simplicity's sake. And finally, I have window.mainloop. This is how Tkinter will execute my application. It will run a main loop, and this main loop will continue running so long as my application is being executed. As soon as I exit the application, this main loop will stop. OK, these are the very basics of Tkinter. So now if I actually run this code, you will see that we have this press me guy right here. If I press on it, nothing's going to happen because we have a pass keyword right here inside of this function. But this is how we were able to create this basic layout. It's also resizable, so it doesn't really have to be this, this tiny. But yeah, this is essentially what we did. So we're going to create our message boxes here inside this open message box function. Now, I said before that there is an import message right here, and I didn't really clarify why we have it. Since we imported Tkinter, 
why do I need to actually import this message box? What difference does it make? Well, in tkinter for message boxes specifically, this is one type of widget that you have to explicitly import and you can't just call it using something like what we did here for tkinter.button. You have to explicitly import it. Okay, all right, perfect. So now that we've imported it, we can actually go ahead and create a message box. The first type of message box I'm going to create is the show info. This is the most basic type of message box. So you can see here we have three different options. I'm going to go with show info. And now I'm just going to simply run my application. So again, you see this very tiny UI with this tiny button asking me to press it. So if I press it, this is my little info. A message box. So you can see there's no text because we haven't added it for now, but this is the most basic version of an info box in message box. Okay, so this is what it looks like. There are two things we need to change to actually change the um, text for this message box. The first one is the title, and this will be the window title. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Let me actually close this and get back. Okay. And the second one is message. So this will be the text inside of your message box. So the first one is a title. I'm just going to say this is info message. And now I'm going to run it, press on the button, and you can see the title here was changed. You can see it's now an info message. So you can see it right here. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention actually is message boxes aren't resizable. They will take up space, space as much as the text inside of them does. So as long as there is no text, it's going to be a very small message box. And you can see we can't really see the entire title because I can't really resize it. All right, okay. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to specify the message. So I'm just going to say this is an info message. Now let me run it again, press on the button, you can see that this is an info message is appearing and now you can see the actual message box. So this is what this basic message box looks like. Again, as I mentioned here, you only have one option, so you don't really have a choice in which you have to compare between yes or no. So the user only has to acknowledge this message box before they move on and can use the rest of the application. As I mentioned before, the application is inaccessible so long as the message box is showing up on the screen and the user hasn't already acknowledged it. Okay, so this was the um, info message box. The other thing you can do is say message box dot show editor. And here we're going to say the title will be um, editor. And then the message will be you made an editor. So this can be anything you want. Of course, these uh, titles and the message will different will be different based on the application that you have and the different use case of your application and where you're actually using these message boxes. I'm going to comment this one out so we don't have to see it again run the application again, press me, and you can see we got an error message box that says you made an error. All right, it's pretty straightforward. It's only one line of code, and we're going to do the same thing now for the warning. So I'm just going to go to a new line, message box dot show warning, and warning will be the one that shows this like yellow triangle. So I will say, sorry, title, it will be warning, and then uh, message do not close this window or something like that. So something warning the user not to perform a certain action. Now again, stop and run, press me, and you can see that this is the warning message box. So these were the three different message boxes in which you only have one option to return and you don't have two different options to compare. Okay, now we're going to move on to the question message boxes. So I'm going to close these guys and come back to my code and comment this one out as well. So there are five different types of question message boxes. We're going to go through two right now, and then we're going to go through the others. So for now, we're going to say message box dot ask question, and we're going to give it a title. The title will be um, question. And then the message itself will be something like, uh, do you wish to proceed? So this is the most basic question I can think of. Okay. Now I'm going to run this guy, press it. You can see we have a question mark icon right here. It's a question and you have two options. You have yes or no. Okay, so you can press either one of these guys. It closes the message box and you can continue using your application. So this, this was the ask question. Now you have something else called the message box dot ask yes, no. So this one right here, and I'm going to again, specify the title. 
um, question and then I'm going to reuse the same me message as the first one. So let me just copy paste this real quick. Here we go. So I'm actually going to run both of them. Press me. You can see the first one. I can press on either yes or no. And then you can see the second one. It looks almost identical. So why would Tkinter provide us with two different options to use here? Well, this is actually related to what is returned by pressing those buttons. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's say I'm going to call this one result question. So this is re the result of the question message box. And then I'm going to call this one result uh, yes, no. Okay, so this is the result of the ask yes, no message box. After each one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the result question for this one. And then here I'm going to print the result yes, no. So this one. Okay, so I want to print them and verify the difference between the two. I'm going to run it again. I press the button. The first one is the question. So here I have message box that asks question. Let's actually press on yes. And you can see that yes was printed out right here in my output, which makes sense because I did actually press on yes. So it makes sense that the result that I saved here is actually yes. Okay. The next one is the ask yes, no. So this is the other type of message box that we launched. Now I'm also going to click on yes again. If I come here to my output, I can see that true was printed out and not yes. So this is the main difference between these two functions that you see right here. Um, not functions, sorry, the two different widgets. So you have the ask question message box and the ask yes, no. So the, this one returns yes when you press on yes and no when you press on no. This one instead returns true or false. So this is what we're going to do. This is how I showed you that yes is returned by this one and true is returned by the other. Now, do I really just want to print them? Not really. What I want to do is I want to use them to perform different actions based on what the user was inputted. So I'm going to comment this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if result question equals equals to yes. I believe it was um, lowercase. Then print um, user chose yes. And on the other hand, else print user chose no. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to close this one, run it again and press on this. Okay, now that I have it, I'm going to press on yes and it printed out user chose yes. So you can see it went inside this guy and it said user chose yes because the result question was yes. Now, if you actually try it out with the other one, this wouldn't work with this one because it's actually not equal to yes. It will be equal to true. That's what we said before. So now we're going to change this to be result yes, no. And rather than say equal, equal, yes, we're just going to check if it's true. So now I'll close this, open this up, press me, press on yes. And let's actually scroll down here and you can see that printed out user chose yes. Okay, so this is the main difference between the ask question and the ask yes, no. They look absolutely identical, but the result that was returned by each different message box is different. So one of them will return yes and no, the other one will return true or false. Knowing these guys is super important because this enables you to write these if statements that will handle whatever happened inside your message box. Okay, so for example, imagine I was using the ask yes, no, and here rather than check for true, I did this and I checked for yes. So now I'll actually run it, press on this, open this up and press on yes, you will see it printed out user chose no. Why is that? This is because the value is actually true and not yes. This means it will check is the result equal equal to yes? Not really, it will go to the else statement and print this out. So. Be careful here. This is why it's important to know what each one of these guys returns from the OK and the uh, from the yes and the no buttons. OK, closing this for now. And yeah, these are the first two message box question that we have here. OK, now we're going to have a new kind, which is the message box dot retry. Sorry, ask retry cancel. And again, I'm going to pass the exact same type of 
title and question. So I'm just going to do this and let's actually comment these guys out. So you can see we have, we're asking, do you wish to proceed? Let's say, do you wish to retry? It would make more sense in this context. And yeah, let's actually run it now. Press me. You can see that this one looks different. Rather than having a question icon, you have a warning icon and you're asking the user whether or not they want to retry. They can either choose cancel or retry. Let's also save the result here. So let's call this result and print out what this result will look like. Now, let's run it, press me, press on retry. What does it print out? It prints out true. Let's try it again, press me, cancel. This prints out false. And also one thing you have to note is you don't have to stop this um, every time from executing. You can uh, press it again and you'll get another message box. Let's press retry this time, it prints out true. So now we know that the outputs returned from this message box are true and false. So now, Let's uncomment this out and apply the exact same logic. So this will be a result. We don't want yes, we, want, we just want to check if it is true. And we will say user chose retry. And then here we'll say user chose cancel. Okay, we don't need to print the result anymore. Let's stop and run it. Press me. Do you wish to retry? Let's say yes. And it says user chose retry. It will also do the same for cancel. Okay. Perfect. Let's stop the code. So now we've covered three of these. Let's have another one, which is ask. Okay. Cancel. Now this one actually, uh, let's change this to proceed again. This one actually works in a very similar manner as well. Let's run it. Press me. Do you wish to proceed? You get a question icon. You have two options here rather than yes or no. You ha actually have okay and cancel. Let me press on okay. Here it printed out user chose retry, although okay, this is okay and not retry. But why is that? This is simply because the result here was true again. And also if we press on cancel, it says user chose cancel. This is because it was false. Now, if you just want me to prove it to you, we can just print out the result and not use these guys, but it's also a very, very similar. Um, okay, let's run it. Press me, press on okay. You can see it's true press it again, press on cancel, you can see it is false. So only in the very first one, the ask question is the response either yes or no. In the ask yes, no, it is true and false. In the retry and cancel, it's also true and false. And the okay and cancel is also true and false. Okay, let's comment these two out and have the final, final message box. So the final one looks like this. We will simply say message box dot ask yes no cancel so now you have three options to choose from again i'm going to have the same title and message as we said these guys will differ based on what your application is so if you are having like if you're asking the user to a certain question this is where your question would be i'm only using this do you wish to proceed as an example okay now that i've created it i can actually stop and rerun again press me and you can see we have three options now yes, no, and cancel. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, if before we had two options and we had these true and false, what do we have here? Well, here you have true, false, and none. And I'm going to prove this to you by doing the following. So print our result, and we'll say the result is equal to the message box. Result equal, okay, here. Let's actually go ahead, press me, let's press on yes. You can see it outputted true. Let's press me again, press on no. You can see we got false. And one last time, let's do it. Press me and press on cancel. You get none. Again, based on these guys, you will code your if statements. So here I can say if result is none. So if the, if the user canceled, print user canceled. And this would be one way to do it. Of course, then you would cover the two other options. And in each case, whatever you want to do in your application, this is where you would plug that code. So for now, I'm plugging in print statements because I don't have an application. I'm just showing you a demo and teaching you how to use these widgets. But in your case, later on, what you're going to do is you will have to plug in your code here. And then this is where you would say whether you want to proceed with the app, change some values, do some certain thing, maybe close the window. It's all up to you. 
All right, so that's really it for this video. We covered all eight types of message boxes in Tkinter. I hope you found it useful. Leave a like and comment if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.